Early shall he rise who has designs on another's land or life. His prey escapes the prone wolf. The sleeper is seldom victorious. Early shall he rise who rules few servants, and set to work at once. Much is lost by the late sleeper. Wealth is won by the swift. A man should know how many logs and strips of bark from the birch to stock in autumn, that he may have enough wood for his winter fires. Washed and fed, one may fare to the thing, though one's clothes be the worse for wear. None need be ashamed of his shoes or hose, nor of the horse he owns, although no thoroughbred. As the eagle who comes to the ocean shore sniffs and hangs her head, dumbfounded is he who finds at the thing no supporters to plead his case. It is safe to tell a secret to one, risky to tell it to two. To tell it to three is thoughtless folly, everyone else will know. Moderate at counsel should a man be, not brutal and overbearing. Among the bold, the bully will find others as bold as he. Often words uttered to another have reaped an ill harvest. Too early, too many homes I came. Too late, it seemed, to some. The ale was finished or else unbrewed. The unpopular cannot please. Some would invite me to visit their homes, but none thought I had eaten a whole joint just before with a friend who had two. These things are thought the best, fire, the sight of the sun, good health with the gift to keep it, and a life that avoids vice. Not all sick men are utterly wretched. Some are blessed with sons, some with friends, some with riches, some with worthy works. It is always better to be alive the living can keep a cow. Fire, I saw, warming a wealthy man, with a cold corpse at his door. The halt can manage a horse, the handless a flock. The death can be a doughty fighter. To be blind is better than to burn on a pyre. There is nothing the dead can do. A son is a blessing, though born late to a father no longer alive. Stones would seldom stand by the highway if sons did not set them there. Two beat one, the tongue is head's bane, pockets of fur hide fists. He welcomes the knight who has enough provisions. Short are the sails of a ship, dangerous the dark in autumn. The wind may veer within five days, and many times in a month. The half-wit does not know that gold makes apes of many men. One is rich, one is poor. There is no blame in that. Cattle die, kindred die. Every man is mortal. But the good name never dies of one who has done well. Cattle die, kindred die. Every man is mortal. But I know one thing that never dies. The glory of the great dead. Fields and flocks had fit young sons, who now carry begging bowls. Wealth may vanish in the wink of an eye. Gold is the falsest of friends. In the fool who acquires cattle and lands, or wins a woman's love, his wisdom wanes with his waxing pride. He sinks from sense to conceit. Now is answered what you ask of the runes, graven by the gods, made by the All-Father, sent by the powerful sage. It is best for man to remain silent. For these things give thanks at nightfall, the day gone, a guttered torch, a sword tested, the troth of a maid, ice crossed, ale drunk. Hew wood in wind time, in fine weather sail. Tell in the nighttime tales to house girls, for too many eyes are open by day. From a ship expect speed, from a shield cover, keenness from a sword, 
but a kiss from a girl. Drink ale by the hearth, over ice glide. Buy a stained sword, buy a starving mare. To fatten at home, and fatten the watchdog. No man should trust a maiden's words, nor what a woman speaks. Spun on a wheel were women's hearts, in their breasts was implanted caprice. A snapping bow, a burning flame, a grinning wolf, a grunting boar, a raucous crow, a rootless tree, a breaking wave, a boiling kettle. A flying arrow, an ebbing tide, a coiled adder, the ice of a night, a bride's bed talk, a broad sword, a bear's play, a prince's children, a witch's welcome, the wit of a slave, a sick calf, a corpse still fresh, a brother's killer encountered upon the highway, a house half burned, a racing stallion who has wretched a leg, are never safe, let no man trust them. Trust not an acre early sown, nor praise a sun too soon. Weather rules the acre, wit the sun, both are exposed to peril. To love a woman whose ways are false is like sledding over slippery ice with unshod horses out of control. Badly trained two-year-olds are drifting rudderless on a rough sea or catching a reindeer with a crippled hand on a thawing hillside, think not to do it. Naked I may speak now, for I know both. Men are treacherous too, fairest we speak when falsest we think, many a maid is deceived. Gallantly shall he speak and give spring who wishes for woman's love. Praise the features of the fair girl, who courts well will conquer. Never reproach another for his love. It happens often enough that beauty ensnares with desire the wise, while the foolish remain unmoved. Never reproach the plight of another, for it happens to many men. Strong desire may stupefy heroes, dull the wits of the wise. The mind alone knows what is near the heart. Each is his own judge. The worst sickness for a wise man is to crave what he cannot enjoy. So I learned when I sat in the reeds, hoping to have my desire. Lovely was the flesh of that fair girl, but nothing I hoped for happened. I saw on a bed Billing's daughter, sun white, asleep. No greater delight I longed for then than to lie in her lovely arms. Come, O then, after nightfall, if you wish for a meeting with me. All would be lost if anyone saw us and learned that we were lovers. A fire with longing, I left her then, deceived by her soft words. I thought my wooing had won the maid, that I would have my way. After nightfall, I hurried back, but the warriors were all awake. Lights were burning, blazing torches, so false proved the path. Towards daybreak back I came, the guards were sound asleep. I found then that the fair woman had tied a bitch to her bed. Many a girl, when one gets to know her, proves to be fickle and false. That treacherous maiden taught me a lesson. The crafty woman covered me with shame. That was all I got from her. Let a man with his guests be glad and merry. Modest a man should be. But talk well if he intends to be wise, and expects praise from men. Thimble Fanby is the fool called, unable to open his mouth. Fruitless my errand had I been silent when I came to sit on his courts. With spirited words I spoke to my prophet in the hall of the aged giant. Rati had gnawed a narrow passage, chewed a channel through stone, a path around the roads of giants, I was like to lose my head. Gunloth sat me in the golden seat, poured me precious mead. Ill reward she had from me for that, for her proud and passionate heart. 
her brooding, foreboding spirit. What I won from her I have well used. I have waxed in wisdom since I came back, bringing to Asgard Odrivir, the sacred draft. Hardly would I have come home alive from the garth of the grim troll, had Gunloth not helped me, the good woman who wrapped her arms around me. The following day the frost giants came, walked into Har's hall to ask for Har's advice. Had Bolverk, they asked, come back to his friends, or had he been slain by Sutong? Oh, then, they said, swore an oath on his ring. Who from now on will trust him? By fraud at the feast he befuddled Sutong, and brought grief to Gunloth.